Hello, everybody, and welcome to Strawberry's Gamer Society. I am Strawberry, and tonight the topic is uh, partying for gamers and uh, party tips for gamers. How how do you go to a party, and what are parties like, and why would you ever even want to go to a party? So. Uh, and then in Minecraft, I am just going to be hanging out in the Owls SMP, and I thought I would also show off. So one of the SMP members has made a recreation. I'm sure some of you can recognize this. This is Technoblade's house. So um, uh, Owls herself has made a recreation of Technoblade's house, and I should have downloaded, she's made a texture pack so that these look like the pictures that are in Technoblade's uh, actual house on the Dream SMP, but I haven't actually downloaded the texture pack yet, so I still have to do that. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd show this off first, because it's pretty cool. Subscribe to Technoblade! And, uh, yeah, while you're at it, if you're not following Strawberry, follow Strawberry! I am a internet gamer mom, and I give lots of tips for gamers. So, this is... oh wait, where did it go? She made an entire sub-basement that is even cooler than Techno's real one, but I'm forgot the entrance. It's in one of these corners somewhere. Um, not that one. I don't want to mess everything up here. And because that was stone, I really don't want to mess it up. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for another night. And it's not finished yet anyway. I am going to wait for another night to show that off. But I should put the stone back. So let me do that. Um, oh! There's a piece of stone. I can do that. Oops. Let's put that back. Okay, so I want to keep one piece of stone and put the rest of it in here. There we go. Oh, I can't anymore. Oh, that's annoying. Well, I guess I'll just stick it in a chest then. There we go. Except I need one piece to fix up that hole I made. There we go. Back down to the basement. And let's put on some music for this evening stream. Let's see here. How about, because we're just kind of hanging out, why don't we do Wilbur's sit for tonight? Oh, and this got adjusted. There we go. And that is a good question for chat is, would you rather, because I can remove, I had the heart rate monitor going for when I was finishing the speed run, trying to get my personal best. Uh, and I don't think I really need it up. It probably won't change that much over the course of the evening. I guess you never know, especially if I start talking about controversial topics. Hello, hi Phantom Reese, welcome, welcome. I was just saying I should ask chat if you guys like the heart rate monitor or if it's uh, too distracting on stream. And uh, so I was just asking what you guys thought about that. And let me get some Wilbur suit to play. There we go. How are you today? This is Technoblade's cabin as uh, envisioned by owls. And it has a really awesome basement, but uh, I am i can't find the basement. Oh wait, did I? No, I need to go down and fix the basement. <laughs> yes, I need to find the basement, and I'm worried that if I just sort of randomly uh, click in all of the corners that I am going to mess something up. So I need to wait for Owls to be here to show it off. And Owls will be joining me on stream for uh, Take Your Daughters to Work Day on April, I want to say April 22nd. So I will ask her to give us a tour of the basement at that time. Now, to get back home, I need to basically just head due south. 
So that is where we're going. And this is, oh yeah, I should turn around and show you Technoblade's cabin from here. So there it is. She's imported some snow, but uh, not too much just yet. But I think it's really a really cool reproduction of Technoblade's cabin. And over here we have signs. You are about to enter the land of shadows. Follow the local law and no harm shall befall you without a reason. Break our rules and we will go to war. Do not say we didn't warn you. <laughs> she is looking for war. Leave me to my peaceful goals and you shall have peace in return. Should you wish to trade, you will be seen as an ally. Antagonize me and your place in history will be as insignificant as the thousands who went that way before. <laughs> yes, the thousands of uh, Blackstone blocks and other things that she has used to uh, terraform the landscape there. So I haven't been on the SMP on stream in quite some time, but there's been some developments, most notably for, uh, for April 1st, then one of the kids who plays on the SMP decided to let the cows out of the pen. So you guys remember just how many cows there were, like, a lot of cows and they basically destroyed an entire wall of the cow pen so now we have cows roaming all over the place and i haven't been able to put them back like the the old boundaries of the cow pen are just gone um and i because there's just no way i was going to be able to herd all the cows back into that space but now oh hello hi call live yay glad you could make it to the stream Yes, so the cows are everywhere. So they're all over there. I made a new fence here to keep them out of the, um, oops, and the only way to get across here is to do a parkour so the cows can't get up this way, but people can get across. And so the cows were all over everywhere in my fields. They were just, they were everywhere. And so I had to spend a lot of time putting them back. Well, I didn't really put them back. I just, I made a fence here and I extended it all the way to the sea. And um, you can see there's still a bunch of cows here. And this fence line now goes, oh, I guess I, I made the fence line go this way. Um, and out to the sea. Oh, this part's still here. But this part is gone. And so there's just cows and cows and cows and cows. And I need to kill all the ones on the other side of that fence. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So that's what I've been doing uh, lately. And then um, the other thing that I've done. Oh, I have to show you guys the new village. But first, let's do a little bit of farming while we're here. Oh, wait. Oh, I can't get through that way without a little parkour. There we go. Um, so yes, I'm going to do just a little bit of farming here to trade paper to the librarians. Oops. I need to put that back. And let's see here. What else have I done? I went on an exploratory trip with owls to uh, the end and I got myself enough shoker shells to make three shoker boxes so I now have three well actually there's the one that I had before so I made two new ones and I found the one that I had before I thought that I lost it in nether but it turns out that I'd put it in a chest and uh, just couldn't find it when I was looking for it earlier so yeah yes there are so many cows but I'm just going to do a quick harvest here and then show you guys what I have done with the village. So I still haven't enclosed the walls in obsidian. That is still a goal, but uh, doing that is something that is going to wait until after. I decided I wanted, I needed 
more librarians because I needed them to sell me different things that nobody else was selling. And... Wait, where's my silk touch pickaxe? Oh, there it is. Okay, there we go. Um, so I've got finally somebody who sells efficiency four. So now I can harvest these really efficiently. And this is definitely, for me, the best emeralds per time, is harvesting the melons and the pumpkins. And uh, the other ones are just, let's see, for these I use this axe. Um, oh, and I need to fix the chicken thing. I broke the chicken thing because there were just way too many chickens and um, it was slowing things down on the server, but then all the chickens got killed, so I need to restart the chicken farm. There's yet another little thing on the to-do list. But tonight's topic is parties and uh, going to parties and why would you ever even want to go to a party if you're a gamer? Like that was definitely my opinion when I was in high school because my image of parties was almost entirely shaped by Hollywood, even though my reality was different than that. So um, at, at, back then there were movies like Animal House and 16 Candles where the definition of a party seemed to be a bunch of teenagers getting drunk and destroying property and hurting each other and being mean and why on earth would I want to do something like that? But as a college student, then I made friends with a different kind of group of people and um, we did different kinds of parties. And, um, and then as a grown up, I continued to make friends with the kinds of people that I wanted to be friends with as opposed to the kinds of people that are stereotypically displayed on in Hollywood movies and it turns out that parties with your friends who are doing things that you like to do gamer parties can actually be a lot of fun um, and so I would encourage people not to not to give up on the concept of parties just because the stereotype of parties is the sort of thing that makes me go, why on earth would anyone ever want to do that? Um, yeah, you, you never go go to parties, and I don't blame you. And obviously in the pandemic, then nobody should be going to uh, real life parties until after everybody's vaccinated and it's no longer circulating in your local area. Yeah, my, my niece just got, just came down with COVID, so she's away at college right now, and she came down with COVID. So although things are not as bad as they were in November, December, it is definitely still out there. Yeah. Ah, the only big one you went to is your sister's bachelorette party. Yeah, that can be, that can be a different kind of experience. Uh, yeah. Oops, what did we got here? So one of the things I want my librarians to sell me is thorns. Okay, clearly in the Great Cow Escape, we must have also lost some uh, lost some torches because these guys should not be spawning. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm working on getting my uh, getting my armor all the way maxed out which is the reason for the harvest and the librarian. Uh, it's like a shopping mall of librarians. <laughs> yeah, hello, welcome, welcome to the stream, BG1302. My mom topics is parties, and I was just talking about how the Hollywood version of a party doesn't have to be your reality for what a party is. Uh, let's see here. I need to get some more space here. And let's see here. Put that somewhere. And I'll 
set this down over here. And so anyway, I was going to give, because I figured the people in my stream, well, obviously I am internet gamer mom. It, is there an entire SMP you missed? Oh, I don't remember when you started watching me. Yes, this is the Owls SMP. And for uh, April Fool's Day, then one of the very young children, like six or seven year olds, let all of the cows out of the cow pen. And now there are cows everywhere. And um, so part of what I have to do is, ah, uh, uh, yeah, okay, you started right about when I stopped playing the SMP and started working on the uh, streams for trying to get my own personal best, which I finally finished in case anybody missed the news. Let's see that pound PB in chat. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this one is private, although I've been kind of having fun with chat, so there's a possibility I might I might make one. I don't know. I haven't haven't thought about it. So yeah, is that something you guys would be interested in? I know the person in Dreams Offline was interested in joining an SMP, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so okay, I will think about it. I'm. Uh, I haven't explored, like, this is the only SMP that I've played, so I haven't explored too many, uh, too many SMPs, but, uh, yeah, there, there would definitely, I would enjoy having some lore on the stream, but I'm not sure how to do it in what, oh, thank you for the water check. I'm not sure how to do lore in a way, like, I want to make sure that like, I create a safe space for everybody because anytime that I'm bringing strangers together to interact, like, it could go really well and people could make friends and, wow. and have, you know, friendships that last a long time, but it can also go really badly. So I want to make sure that everybody stays safe and that, you know, we don't get any grooming behaviors going on in unhealthy ways. But at the same time, you know... People like Tommy and Tubbo met online and just playing with each other and Dream and George and so you know it's it, there's lots of possibilities that of things that could go right and if we stay too afraid of things going wrong then we disallow things going right which was back to my part on point on parties again that uh, yeah uh, it like parties they can be really fun they don't have to be the kind of thing that you saw in spider-man homecoming where the cool kids are being rude and mean to the not quite so cool kids um and so let me put this down because i can't i'm still trying i as a streamer i'm still working on the ability to play minecraft and stream at the same time um or and like talk to chat and everything at the same time. I'm working on it. It's a skill I'm definitely better at now than I was at the beginning, but uh, still working on it. But luckily you guys are patient. It's, 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 I, I love my chat. You guys are a great chat. So, um, yeah. So I try to do mom topics back before I started working on uh, trying to get my personal best and beating Minecraft without cheating, which I am very proud of, by the way. Uh, and I even did the bed thing, and I got a couple of really good bed hits. So that I am particularly proud of. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go across and back, and then... Uh, let's see, is this sunrise or sunset? I didn't pay attention, I think... Yeah, uh, I will go sleep if it's nighttime. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, back to parties. Um, Spider-Man Homecoming is a modern day example of a Hollywood stereotype of what a party could be, but what a party doesn't have to be. Parties don't have to involve drinking and loud music and people being mean to one another. The, the parties that I have, I really enjoy. Um, and, you know, it's people being friends with each other. And sometimes we hang out and listen to music, but 
most of the time we play board games. We, we hang out and we play board games together. We sit on the couch and we talk. We do lots of fun things, but, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be ugly. I, I don't know. Have Like, it can be fun. Like, you can invite friends and people who don't necessarily know one another. One of the things, um, when my husband and I first got married, then we would invite people over to our house for parties and um, just play games together. Like, Great Dal Moody is a fun card game to play. It's a... a party card game to play and we'd play outpost which is a serious gamer game and um lots of other games and we would invite people over to our house to play oops wrong axe and then others of our friends then they would invite people over to their apartments to play and when my husband and i bought a house together we ended up renting out rooms to the other two people who used to have uh, host parties so our house definitely became the party house and we had mixing social groups from uh, our social group plus each of the other two friends' social groups and one of the things that we'd say to the people who came to our parties is uh, it's okay if you don't know anybody because nobody else knows anybody either and over the course of the last 20 years that group of people has gotten to know each other from very diverse uh, backgrounds, has gotten to know each other and be friends. And now, you know, now they do know each other and uh, and the people who are coming know each other. And sometimes we, we still get new people. Like it's harder when you get older to make new friends. It's I think it's easier when you're younger to make new friends, but... Uh, yeah, it gets harder when you get older to make new friends, but we still meet new people from time to time. And during the pandemic, it's been really hard to meet new people. Um, but you can have the kind of party where people aren't drinking and it's still a really fun party. Um, and if you are the kind of person who decides that you want to drink alcohol at the party first of all don't do it especially if it's not legal don't do it if you don't want to like it's okay to go to a party where people are drinking and not drink like when i was in college then um the dorm that i lived in we had parties that were kind of like the, the dorm that I lived in was not known for the part as being the party dorm, but it would still put on two parties per year. And uh, they were definitely not the loud drunk parties of the dorm across the way. And that was kind of why I went to that dorm as opposed to the, the dorm across the way. Um, it, but the it was interesting that people were, like most people I would say didn't drink alcohol. But people were still worried about the stereotype that they should be drinking alcohol. And I guess that's my message to you guys is if you don't want to, just don't. And find a group of friends where that's an okay way to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, your whole school is known for being a party school. Uh-oh. But, you know, it's okay for you to make a different choice. And, um, and hopefully, even though your school is known for that, hopefully you can find a group of friends. It doesn't have to be a large group of friends, but a couple other people who aren't interested in that. I mean, assuming that you're, you're not interested in it. And... Um, and that it's okay. You don't have to conform to Hollywood stereotypes. Like, I am very, very big into not conforming to stereotypes. And that includes, you know, good ones and bad ones, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Um, you be... It's, it's okay to just be who you are and say... No, actually, I don't feel like drinking, but the people at the party, I would say probably at least two-thirds of the college students at the parties that um, I went to didn't drink, but in my conversations with them, each one of them was kind of 
a little defensive about it. Like the, I'm not drinking and I, I never drink and uh, I, I have my 7-Up and that's what I always have when I go to parties. But it was kind of, he, the guy who told me that wasn't really comfortable in his own skin saying that. Um, and, uh, my husband just plain didn't go at all, period, and that's okay, too, uh, uh, and, but I want, I want the world to be a place where people can feel comfortable not going, and, uh, or not drinking, and just being okay with that without even having to be defensive about not drinking. Um, and so here are some strategies of not drinking. So these were originally given to me, believe it or not, by my sixth grade teacher. So Mr. Cerruti was awesome. And he, he, he was one of those teachers that taught us a lot of, like, I remember very little about the, you know, the school subjects that Mr. Cerruti taught us. But I remember his talk about how to not drink at parties. So th this is uh, kind of from, from my teacher, Mr. Cerruti, on how, how to not drink at parties. And uh, let's see here. I need some more nutritious food. Well, I know. I'll just harvest the wheat. That'll be fine. Um, and so what he said was there's lots of things you can do. You can say, uh, no, I'm not drinking tonight because I have a test tomorrow or I have a sports event tomorrow or, you know, come up with a reason why you're not drinking or no, I'm not drinking because I don't want to, which is a perfectly valid reason. But sometimes the other people that you're talking to aren't going to accept that as a reason. So sometimes you need to give them a different reason. And you could say things like, um, no thanks, I'm the one who's driving tonight, or I promised my parents I wouldn't, you can turn your parents into the bad guys, and they'll know. Uh, or if that's not working, oh, your sixth grade te history teacher was like that too. He made history interesting, and that's the reason you like it today. Yeah, good teachers make such a difference, a huge difference. And one of the other techniques that he gave us is if you are feeling the social pressure to drink and you don't feel that you have the strength within you to say, no thanks, I'm not drinking, then one of the techniques that you can use is like to accept it when somebody gives you a can of beer, but don't actually drink it go into the bathroom and pour it down the sink and put water in it so you can look like you're sipping something that's not empty, but, you know, just have water in your beer can. And that is a possible way that you can, you know, if you're at one of those parties, uh, not lose social clout, but at the same time, stay true to what your values are. And um, another Another thing that he told us, which, uh, like, I have to say, in my life, I have been fortunate enough that the friends that I have had, like, in high school, like, I also just, I'm a square. Like, I am such a square, guys. I, uh, <laughs> it is so obvious that I am a square that nobody in my entire high school ever asked me to drink or to do drugs or anything like that or or in college because it's just really clear by the way that I conduct myself in life that the answer is just no. Um, and so I was never pressured to do any of those things. If I had wanted to drink or do things, then I would know how, like I would know who to contact, but I never wanted to and nobody ever pressured me to. It would, it would have been for curiosity's sake as opposed to um, because of peer pressure, which is an interesting thing. But back to the peer pressure. Um, one of the other things Mr. Cerruti uh, gave us to say was when, when he was talking to a friend of his, he said, 
if one of these days I'm going to grow up and you're going to grow up and we're both going to have kids and I'm going to tell my kids, kids be like me. And you, when you grow up, you're going to tell your kids be like Mr. Saruti. And I remember that, you know, I am 45 years old and I was 10 when he told me this and I still remember that line and I think, wow, that is, that, that's a good line, that's a powerful line. Be like Mr. Saruti when you grow up. So, and who do you want to be, what kind of person do you want to be for your kids when you grow up? And I have to say, I'm kind of proud of the person I am for my kids, uh, but... And again, I've kind of made being a mom a large part of my identity. And let's go sleep here. So, um, let's see here. So that that's kind of ways, things that you can do to not drink if you're at one of those parties where people are drinking and you kind of feel socially pressured to. You can first of all, I would encourage you to just be yourself and not feel pressure from anybody else. And that's like, you'd be surprised. I think most of the people I would expect watching this stream are probably not in the in crowd. Um, and that's okay. And it also gives you tremendous freedom when you're not in the in crowd, because when you're in the in crowd, then you've got a whole different set of pressures to worry about of like for us who are kind of on the outskirts if i want to try something different with my hair or do something wild with my clothing then i don't have to worry about losing social status if i try something different because i'm already on the outside of any social uh, social cliques where people care about those things. So I have tremendous freedom to experiment. Where it, When you're at the top of the social pecking order, you feel a lot of pressure to conform and a lot of pressure to do things that other people will think is cool. And there's, I mean, I don't want to uh, you know, say that that's, uh, you know, cry me a river or whatever for the people at the top of the social pecking order, but, you know, it, they don't have the same freedom that people on the outside of the ordinary social pecking order have to make different choices and to just experiment with being different and being who you really are. Um, but anyway, back to parties and, um, and saying no to alcohol and or drugs and things like that. So it is especially important to not drink alcohol in a situation where the person, if somebody older than you is pressure, like one of the things alcohol does is it lowers your inhibition. So if normally you would say, no, I don't want to do that really crazy, stupid thing, then alcohol lowers your inhibitions. It, the, the part of your brain that says, actually, that's a bad idea to tell that um, person who's, you know, twice as big as I am that I think they look ugly. Uh, the part of that, your brain that has that uh, inhibits your doing stupid things is uh those inhibitions are gone when you're drinking alcohol and so one of the things that people who want to take advantage of you will do is encourage you to drink alcohol um if somebody wants to you know have sex with you against your will then they may encourage you to drink alcohol so if someone is encouraging you to drink alcohol that you uh, don't want to do those things with, then be especially vigilant not to drink anything or take any or take any drugs. Basically, 
only eat things that come out of a can or come out of a uh, come out of a uh, pre-prepared bag that is bought at a store uh, or come out of a can or whatever. Don't eat and drink things that could have been doctored if there is any risk at all that they might have been doctored. Um, so, yeah, that's that's that. Um, so, let's see. Let me eat. Okay, um, what else? So, yeah, uh, don't, uh, let's see here. I made notes so that I wouldn't forget anything. Uh, yeah, be especially wary of people pressuring to dr dr to drink who are one up, uh, one generation up with you, or who might like you and be trying to have sex with you, even if they're of your own generation. Um, because, you know, you, when you make that decision, you want it to be on a clear mind. You don't want it to be because your inhibitions are lowered. Oh, water check. Thank you. Wow. Time is flying. Um, and so, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Uh, where was I on my notes? I lost track. Okay. Yeah, one of the things that people, so people who have been in my stream for a while know that when I did my, my internet safety one, then I talked about this, but, uh, people who want to take advantage of minors sexually, one of the things that they do is encourage the minors to engage in illegal behavior and then the minor thinks oh and, and then they'll then they'll you know have sex with you against your will but you think to yourself oh i can't tell anyone because i was drinking and you know they'll blame me because i was drinking and that's like that, that that's one of the things they do and you have to be aware that that's something so a you don't want anybody to take advantage of you sexually therefore don't drink um when you're in a situation where that might happen but even if you do it is never the minor's fault like grown-ups shouldn't do that to kids shouldn't trick kids into drinking when they shouldn't um and uh, using that as an excuse for i mean while on the one hand yes there's things you can do to protect yourself on the other hand you should never feel bad about being tricked by grown-ups who are explicitly trying to trick you um i don't know how to say that better but it's always worth telling someone if something like that happens to you. Never let the fact that, you know, they let you drive their car, or they helped you cheat on a test, or something that you feel bad about, never let that be an excuse for not telling people when something bad happens to you. And most frequently, it's a relative or someone like a family friend who is already known to you or known to the rest of your family. So that makes it harder for the rest of your family to believe that something bad will happen. Um, but uh, so, yeah, do your best to protect yourself in the first place by not doing stupid things like that. But if you do, know that, like, Grown-ups shouldn't do that anyway. So yeah, sorry. That's that's my mom talk. Uh, but I think it's worth it's worth saying. And hey, I am internet gamer mom, so I get to say these things. I want you guys to be safe. Um, so yeah, it was yeah. When I was in school, then I pretty much picked friends, and I had a reputation that it just peer pressure from peers was never a problem for me because um, I picked people who who had the same values that I did uh, as a friend. And as a geek, I kind of like my mind intact. I don't like the feeling of being out of control. And if I'm doing anything at all that gets out of control, it was 
um, p playing video games in upside down mode or spinning around in circles until I felt dizzy. Those are the sorts of things that I would do, but I never did anything chemical to get out of control. Um, and as a grown up, like after it was legal and everything, then um, I have never drunk a whole glass of alcohol. I did tr taste a, there, I, I've tasted a red, a white, and a rosé in different experiences. Um, one time at a restaurant and it's like, I had just a sip and it's like, eh, I don't like this. And for me, the smell of beer is just disgusting. I have never been tempted to uh, eat, try beer. Um, and I have had just a sip of each of the others, but it's so astringent. I just don't like the taste or the flavor, and so I have never, um, I have never drunk like a, a whole glass of alcohol. I've had not even enough to hardly taste it, but enough to taste it and go, eh, what's the big deal? Why do people like this? But some people do, and some people like that feeling of, I guess you'd call it the buzzed feeling, the, the, the high feeling that people get from alcohol. And um, so if that's a feeling you like and you're of the appropriate age in your country um, where drinking is okay, and if you are safe, only if you're safe and doing it with people near you who will take care of you, then... Um, how do you drink responsibly if you're at a party and you would like to drink responsibly? Um, so for that, let's see, it is nighttime again. Let me ditch these potatoes and carrots and go sleep. But um, so one of the things that I did was um, go, so I've taken classes at the local junior college and uh, I got lost, where's my house? There it is. Um, and so I've taken classes at the local junior college and when I went to the local junior college most recently, then I, there's like two that are equidistant from my house and um, I took German and, uh, German and Chinese and um, ASL at one of them. And then I went to the other one just last year for or maybe it was the year before that. It was 20, 2018, I think, um, for piano classes. I started learning how to play the piano. And in, in that, then I was going to a different junior college and they had an orientation. And so I thought, okay, I'll go to this and learn how to, you know, buy my books and sign up for classes and all of that. But their whole orientation training thing was all about how to, um, well, A, you guys have probably seen it before. It's the the uh, obtaining consent before having sex, uh, tea, no tea uh, talk. And maybe I'll do that one on stream at some point, but uh, I'm sure you guys have all heard it because it is so popular. Um, but they did that. And then they did um, how to maintain your buzz at parties and how to drink alcohol responsibly. Because I think, um, in this area at least, people have finally realized that telling kids don't drink alcohol is not working in terms of a strategy for getting people to either not drink alcohol or uh, not or, or to drink it responsibly. And so they, um, they did a whole thing on how to drink alcohol responsibly. So what I learned there was, let's see here. I took notes and I have gotten them out. So I want to share this with you guys. So the things, if you really want to go to a party and have that lowering of your inhibition so that it's easier to talk to people or whatever, A, I recommend personally using non-alcoholic means to do so, but 
if you've decided to drink alcohol anyway, then make sure A, you have a plan beforehand. So if you don't go to the party intending to drink some alcohol while you're there, don't drink the alcohol because you'll need to have a plan in advance. And part of that plan is know how you're gonna get home and know who there is going to help you be a responsible person. So you can go with a friend and help be responsible for that person or like have that person help be responsible for you. So make sure that you have a plan and you've got a buddy who's gonna help you be responsible, which involves not drinking and driving, like knowing how are you going to get home and um, yeah, if you're from the Netherlands and everybody bikes everywhere, not biking and driving. And, you know, for other countries too, don't bike and drive, but um, it's it's more important where there's, like, lots of bikes, I think. Um, well, actually, no, it's just important not to be doing something where you could crash your head and uh, permanently get brain damage. Um, so it's important, no matter which country you're in, not to bike and drive, not to drink and drive and be careful on the walking home drunk and driving um that is with that then you're unlikely to injure anybody else but you still don't want to injure yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah almost everything is banned while biking well that's probably good <laughs> that is probably a good thing so, uh, yeah, banning, banning texting and, and driving, uh, or texting and biking, uh, being on your phone and biking, that is also good, because you're not paying attention. Like, as a cyclist, you really need to be a paying attention to what's going on around you. So, having a plan, that's, that's A star number one, and, uh, with Uber and Lyft these days, it's so easy to get a ride home that... It, and you know go to the party that way in the first place that there's no reason not to really so um yeah have a plan number two eat something if you're going to be drinking then the way your body absorbs alcohol is um different if you have eaten something like it it will go into your bloodstream more slowly and not only is this better for your liver which has the enzymes which break down the alcohol but it also helps you not get as drunk as fast and um so that is a good idea the next thing is only have at most one drink per hour so i think probably everybody who might be considering drinking has heard this someplace else before but i might as well say it on stream that the size of your drink like the alcohol content in a drink changes depending on what kind of drink it is so for a beer that's like 12 ounces of beer but it's the same size the same amount of alcohol that's in maybe a six ounce glass of wine, or if you're having shots like a uh, teeny tiny little shot glass, which is barely a fingerful. Hello, hi Petra, welcome, welcome. I am talking about how to uh, have fun at parties. And then very soon I was gonna show off Oh wait, that's the... Oh yeah, that is the right chest. Okay. And then very soon I was going to show off my li librarian place. So, yeah. So most of what you have missed has all been all about you don't have to drink and you don't have to uh, get drunk to have fun at parties. But if you are just tuning in now, I am currently doing the part about... Um, if you've decided that that is a thing you want to do, here's how you do it responsibly. So, um, let's see here. I've got beets and I think I have, well, okay. I want to get one more set of melons because I have three different farmers that will buy melons. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill these up one more time. And melons are like the best 
uh, emeralds per space of any of the things in my field because it only takes me four melons for an emerald. So, uh, well, I need to refresh the farmers frequently. I at least get a lot of emeralds for the space that they take up in my inventory. There's a reason. So, um, anyway, the other things are, yeah, only have one drink per hour, so that's one beer or one glass of wine or one shot per hour, and then drink a glass of water between every single alcoholic drink, um, and also eat a little bit more in between every single alcoholic drink, uh, because that, like... You don't want to get to the point where your stomach feels bad and you're going to throw up and um, it's just you feel very unpleasant because, like, what's the point of that? Why, why make yourself unhappy? I mean, the point, if you're going to drink at all, generally speaking, the point is to have that small blood alcohol content so that you feel a bit euphoric and maybe you let your guard down a little bit, but why would anybody want to give themselves a stomach ache on purpose? Like, that makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so the, the fun part, but you don't want to get so drunk that you're uncomfortable. So, to keep that buzz going the longest, what they said is drink uh, no more than one drink an hour and have water and food in between each one so that you can keep that buzz going without getting that stomach achy feeling. Um, yeah, and then never drink and drive. I already said that. And so back to how do you have fun at parties? One thing you can do is if nobody else is hosting a party that you want to go to, you can host your own party and um, invite people that you like or that you think you might like. Like, it's okay to stretch a little bit and say, you know, I don't know this person very well, but I'd like to invite them to my party and maybe we'll have a good time. Um, or invite your friends to invite their friends. Um, so I have always had gaming themed parties because that's the thing that's fun for me. Um, I should replant. I'm not going to bother to replant today. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get one more set of pumpkins and then call it a night and go to the village and sell all this stuff and show off the librarians. Uh, so... Yeah, have your own party. Invite people to come to your party who you think you would have fun. If it's in person, so this is like pre-pandemic or post-pandemic, then if you're having an in-person party, then it's generally best to offer your guests some food and um, like bottled water or soda or one of the things that we did one time at, uh, it was a larger party that we had for, um, it was like an after conference party for uh, Gamers GDC, which is Gamers Developer, Game Developers Conference. And um, we had, I bought two five gallon things of water and then I added red Kool-Aid mix to one and blue Kool-Aid mix to the other. And I labeled one of them mana and I labeled the other one health. So we had uh, mana potions and health potions for people to drink at our party. Um, and let's see. So like if you have something like soda and uh, water, definitely water because it's healthy and ha allowing people to make healthy choices is good. I always had Sharpies and the red cups and encouraged people to write their name on their cups uh, so that they don't accidentally pick up the wrong cup. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I need to put these things in the box. If the box is not full. Um, so, I always encouraged people to 
write their names on their cups so I didn't waste cups. And also it's just really hard to keep track of where your cup is um, at, at a party sometimes. Um, and then, you know, make sure your guests are comfortable. Like uh, that there's, they have a place to set their stuff down and that the temperature is not too hot or not too cold, that kind of thing. Um, and then talk to people, like encourage them when people come, introduce them to one another, make sure everybody knows who everybody else is and introduce them to one another. And depending on your group, then you'll know the topics that people like to talk about, hopefully. But if you don't, then uh, one of the topics that tends to go over well is, hey, I saw this cool YouTube video. And while everybody's watching your YouTube video, they're all thinking in their head, oh, I want to show off my funniest ever YouTube video that I've seen. And that can go on. Yeah, how's the weather? How about them A's? Uh, that's the uh, the baseball team near where I am. So sports is a thing that people talk about. YouTube videos is a thing that people talk about. For us here, the Dream SMP is a thing that people talk about. Um, so, you know, there's, there's lots of possibilities for... Uh, for uh, conversational topics, but you know, having a conversational topic that people feel comfortable, like t pets is another really good one, like stupid pet stories. Um, occasionally, like if it's not too personal, then uh, like if nobody in your group has had a really bad car accident, then the car accident story or the uh, I got a speeding ticket story is a good set of things to have. So this is my librarian imperium. So I have got all of these librarians here and they all, well, okay, not all of them sell different books, um, but most of them sell different books and, oh, that's interesting. I am lagging bad, uh, but you can, uh, it's like, this guy doesn't sell books, so what I need to do for this guy is break the, break that and put it back again until they sell something else. But, uh, these are, Curse of Binding is not exactly one that I want. Uh, but this is my library. I spent a lot of time on Saturday working on this. And this guy here, the reason why he has an oak block instead of uh, instead of glass is because he's not associated with the right lectern. So I need to figure out who his matching librarian partner is and um, switch houses so that he can find where his lectern is. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd show this off. It looks so good. Thank you. Yeah, so eventually all the walls here are going to be obsidian, but um, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, but this is our new librarian area. And this is the area for everybody else. And basically there's a lot of beds that are broken and missing here because every time a librarian went to sleep over here, I had to break the bed and basically tell them, go sleep over there, that's where you belong. But I finally got that done and that is so nice. And once I figured out how to do it, I decided I'm probably, I'd like to do that with the farmers and everybody else basically so that they've all got their own special little job station um, and and they're easier to find so now i need to set down my shulker boxes and oh come on let me place there please thank you uh, and trade with these guys Okay, let's see here. Let's start with melons and bees and carrots. I've lost my uh, I don't need that. Uh, don't need that. Uh, don't need that right now. I definitely don't need that. Okay. 
So, let's find the farmer who buys these things. There we go. All right, so that is basically, um, those are my tips. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, real life tips. There we go. Oh, I didn't do my, my party tips for how do you have a gamer party over Zoom? Um, so that's one of the things that we've been doing with our friends an awful lot. One of my friends has been hosting about once a month, so I have not hosted as often um, the Zoom parties because somebody else has been hosting them. But those are also really fun. Um, and, I, well, I don't know. They're not as fun as getting together in person. They're, they're, they're an acceptable way of socializing with people that I would like to socialize with. Ooh, three. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, one trade uses them up, but still, that is a really good rate for how much space it takes up in my inventory versus how many emeralds I get out of it. Nice. All right, so now let me find other farmers. Okay, that's the guy I've already done. So if I hold a pumpkin, then the farmers who will give emeralds for pumpkins will show their emeralds. Um, there we go. And I think there is a third farmer who will buy those things. Just need to find them. This guy. Um... Yeah, lost my train of thought again. Oh, water check. Thank you. Oh, and it's 2 a.m. So I'd like to try to get back to stopping the streams at 2 a.m. I know when I was trying really hard to get the PB, it was hard to stop. Uh, but I want to get back to the, two, the one hour stream from 1 to 2 a.m. So I hope this was useful for everybody. Um, it's it's. It's good to get together with friends. Um, oh, right, Zoom parties. I didn't finish my Zoom party thoughts. Uh, yeah, you can make special, like you can make Zoom rooms for different games and people can break out into different breakout rooms for different games. And it's not quite as good as real life parties, but it's better than nothing. Um, and I am gonna put on the good night music. So I hope that everybody has, like, interacting with people in real, real life is important. Um, why is this not working? Huh. My C key is... Oh, I rebound it, and so I can't give you F5 right now. So anyway, I will... Here, we'll do it this way. Good night, everybody. It is good to see you. And um, yeah, I hope that you have fun. Relationships are important. Like, their school is important, family is important, relationships with other people. Sometimes it's hard and it's painful, especially at the beginning, but the over time, relationships with people are the most important assets that you have. So spend time on them and do them right. Uh, and parties is one way to do that. So let me find somebody to raid. And if you have any suggestions, oh! Zoe, you made it! Wonderful! So good to see you! So, yeah, um, if anybody has a suggestion of who to raid, go ahead and write that in the chat. Otherwise, I will find somebody. Um, ooh, let's see here. We have Yeti and we have Queen Cack. Let's raid Queen Cack, because I like raiding Queen Cack. Uh, yes! Oh, well, I'm so glad you're here! Excellent! I'm glad that you made it to one of the streams! Uh, and I hope that you have a great day and a good time. Uh, if you haven't heard, right, my, my announcement is, so not tonight, not tomorrow night, but the night after that, I am going to be doing, um, I'm going to be doing fudge. And I believe somebody has clipped the fudge recipe, so you can go to my website and, um, 
you can go to my website or not my like my my Twitch site or something and see the clip so that you'll know the ingredients you need to obtain to be making fudge. But we'll be making fudge in real life on um, Tuesday night for me, which will be Wednesday morning for people in Europe. Uh, with the, so it's like 1 a.m. Wednesday, California time. And let us raid Queen Cack. We have uh, one viewer, two viewer, three viewers ready to raid Queen Cack. Is six viewers in three, two, one. Raid now. Good night, everybody. Have a great day.